Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, I feel very privileged and happy to be part of these sessions, and I want to thank God, who is our guide, who is our mentor, who is our teacher, preacher, protector, any role he fits in, for your good, for your benefit. And His mercies and grace, they are new every morning. You obtain new favor from the eyes of God. Bible says in Proverbs 835. And that's the only reason that you and I are alive. I believe that. Why I believe that's the truth. Simple. <clears throat> if you're having any hope in your skills, capabilities, talent, qualification, education, uh, position at workplace and bank balances. Oh, I'm all secured and good health and strength and all that. Yeah, whoever were very healthy, their birthday last this morning, you know. Every single day, you, you happen to watch news or read newspapers. You happen to see or hear. And uh, people who come to the funeral, they come and witness. Ah, you know, last night he was with us. Uh, there, there used to be an actor here, Mr. Punit Rajkumar, uh, who passed away at the age of 46. Very nice human being. Not a believer in Christ, but let's leave that aside for now. But a very nice human being was into charity and all that. He was attending a function, a show. He's a, he's a movie actor and also a, what is the right name? Um, I do not know what is the right name. Some some logist. Uh, what is it? Anthropologist. Or, uh, I, I keep forgetting. He does all social service. A nice human being. I learned a lot from him. Very nice human being. And he attends a function along with his brother. He dances in that uh, show and uh, everything and next day morning he goes to gym he complains he's having little pain around his chest and they take him to the doctor and the doctor says rush him to the emergency ward on the way to the emergency ward he died that's it over one of the iconic stars over right and uh, many people got into psychosomatic uh, psychosomatic in the sense after this gentleman passed away. So many youngsters, regardless of religion, gender, age, and <laughs> uh, whatever, right? They all lined up in hospitals consulting uh, the cardiologist saying, um, you know, check my heart too and all that. <laughs> you all understand what I'm saying? Therefore, do not bank on your health. That is okay now. Already, you know, aging process would have begun. Year over year, your, your, your spare parts are aging. Spare parts in the sense what? Vital organs are aging, your liver, kidney and all that. Okay, interestingly I was reading Bible, uh, no don't ever <laughs> catch by my own statement or oh, that means you read Bible once in a blue moon, no not like that. But I got caught up with one verse, I meditate on specific verses, my regular Bible reading is different. See how I read Bible, I will tell you. Maybe a few of you will find it very helpful, interesting. I read my Bible, NKJV version. Always I will have my hand on NKJV version. Very close to the Aramic translation. One of the um, first and foremost translated Bible, right? NKJV. That pattern will keep going from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Finished? Yes, again, Genesis to Revelation. Genesis to Revelation. That cycle keeps going. In parallel... I've got a Jewish to English translation Bible only a month ago because I told you this itself was too much for me to digest. It took me almost 28 years to finish. I did not read any Bible, any other versions, NIV, NBS, and uh, you know Bible Society, BSI. All these things I didn't have time to read just to check on the Catholic Bible also I have. right? And now I have started reading the Jewish to English, original Jewish Aramic version, to English, New and Old Testament. Got an imported book, very costly one. My wife presented. <laughs> My wife gifted it to me uh, because one miracle happened in her life and she wanted to thank God. I said, yes, do something for my ministry. You can do something for the poor, but do something for the ministry that I'm, what do you want, she asked. And I was wondering what should I ask. And that day I happened to go to UTC uh, center here and I was uh, just, just glancing through the books and the, and the Bible NBS version of the Old Covenant in Aramic language to English. Aramic from, you know, right, the Jewish books are written from uh, reverse to the front. 
the last page will be the first and the first page will be the last like that as i was reading then ah, i like this bible and all that and she said oh, okay i will gift you this then uh, she gifted even a better version which had both old and new covenant that is the second reading i do yeah and uh, it's a it's a kind of a pattern and now i have started reading the forbidden books the books they have not included in the bible apart from 66 books around 6 or 7 books it's in the catholic bible only sirak sirak judith these books you won't find here i am reading for some reasons they excluded but i don't understand why because i do not understand means i don't understand that's it and uh, that's okay for some reasons they excluded but i want to still read those books and understand uh and extract some of the principles and uh, and take the right principles and teach those principles to the people of god that's it you all understand why this is apart from ministries this is bible reading pattern yes how many of you believe that oh this guy is a preacher and teacher he he may not have time to read the bible sorry first priority to bible and prayer the remaining time only for ministry where did i learn it from jesus my lord okay now james chapter 4 verse 1 i was meditating where do wars and fights come from among you do they not come from your desires for pleasure in other words original translation lustful pressures this is why you need to read those aramaic bibles arabic aramaic to english hebrew to english bible lustful desires that war in your members i didn't understand because all these days all of us assumed when i call out lust what is that comes in your mind pornography adultery uh, uh watching at a woman with a lustful attitude you prostitute if you are doing so matthew 5:28 29 uh, do not uh, lust uh, old covenant uh, commandment all these things will come to your mind correct have you ever thought that wars and fights wars and fights means not about nation fighting against nation alone kingdom fighting against kingdom alone importantly quarrels and attitude anything you ask immediately a controversial reply will come ah, why are you asking me am i looking like a clown mm-hmm. hooking others for fight why because you have a lustful attitude you have a great desire for pleasure it says in the sense you have pride looking down on others how dare you come and ask me a silly question like that you don't know do you know who i am in the background you know in the behind your mind this is what is actually running you, you won't believe me you check on yourself you will understand you have that pride <clears throat> until the child is like 4 or 5 years <clears throat> you will be dealing very compassionately and all that when the child crosses 10 years ah uh, don't you know how to talk uh, you have to be strict towards children but then sometimes children are children right they come and ask certain silly questions too and uh, are you so stupid to ask me this and all that why you are looking down you are the elder you are the boss over the house and you have that pride at workplace you are a senior member and a new a uh, newcomer joins your company who is absolutely junior to you how do you treat that person that lady or gentleman or or a senior joins your company who is much senior to you and that naturally you have a ego why because you are a very senior guy no why don't you learn it all by yourself huh? why should i tell you <laughs> you are having that pride brother my sister you are too strong for god to be used moses was very proud about his education about his talent and he is able to kill a egyptian soldier in one blow that means he was stronger than that guy and obviously he know that he knew that he was special because his mother told all the stories and how he was rescued and he was rescued from water and all that you know he is the deliverer you are a chosen baby and all that she taught him everything in that 6 or 7 years where she was bringing him up then he went to palace nobody knew that except pharaoh's sister and uh, moses family yeah it was kept secret but it got registered in his mind very clearly that i am the deliverer therefore i am going to do this i i myself and me proud or attitude of pride 
what god did to moses sent him to wilderness for 40 years yeah labeling him as a murderer he fled for his life bible says he was scared for his life and he fled from the spot of uh, from the presence of pharaoh and after 40 years had gone in wilderness the guy comes and stands before the presence of god and says i even forgot the aramic language i even even forgot my mother tongue i am completely useless i forgot my skills i forgot my talent i am broken i am weak i am old i am feeble god said aha uh-huh. <laughs> now you are 200% qualified moses come i will show you what it is to work with god and i will make you like god that's what god told him right you will be like god to the people Uh, but of course there were alterca- i mean altercations between our um, not arguments uh, he was asking many crazy questions god was angry at one stage he was about to kill him all this you will read in exodus you all understand that's called as that is also the definition of lust lust means immediately don't relate it to sexual matters only yeah anger management is part of your lust lust is a program under which you have so many projects anger management is also one of the projects under the program called as lust <laughs> very angry short tempered hypertensed the very reason for anger hypertensions <clears throat> short tempered attitude is <clears throat> because you are very very proud proud of, proud of uh, you are very proud of your qualification education position in the society or at your workplace you are earning more than your wife or wife is listening to me earning more than your husband you are always arrogant to your uh, husband you have violated your laws and commandments or husband's very arrogant to your wives you have not taken good care all the you, why god appointed you as the head over the house because the uh, she is a weak vessel ladies you know they cry very quickly why because they have been manufactured that way and that's why god appoints you and me to take care of them not to keep poking your fingers against them and criticizing them and all that you know all of you are looking at me where did you learn the, uh, all this and i learned it through experience <clears throat> i was a sinner at some point of time i didn't understand i was quite young inexperienced then over a period of time god taught me many things through bible and few things through my wife who educated me very politely one of the precious gifts i got from god is my wife and i know those days i used to, those days means why i was a angster right almost night from the age of 23 i used to fast and pray uh, on uh, every saturdays i used to fast and pray it's a big uh, testimony let's leave that uh, because saturdays i used to go to work i told god god you're going to give me that saturday i will dedicate it in fasting and prayer and i did that faithfully god is my witness those those days i used to kneel for 2 3 hours continuously i'm not saying it's a ritual that you need to practice no problem but nowadays i have a little bit of back pain aging problems and this and that i'm not able to kneel for too long and those days i used to meditate from proverbs 31 10 to 31 the virtuous wife this is how my wife should be i did not look for skin color and this and that but god gave me a beautiful wife also <laughs> i love her and she loves me we are a good couple but yes there were difference of opinion there were a little bit of quarrels there were a little bit of misalignments misadjustments and all that god over a period of time he built that fellowship he built that intimacy he built that oneness and that's what i'm sharing with you husbands and wives listening to me huh? you have that warring attitude and uh, fights and quarrels and attitude and contradictions and stuff like that that's normal but then over a period of time it should dissolve it should vaporize if not there is lust in your flesh and the other name for that lust is pride warm welcome to this lesson number i don't know but episode number 2 jesus christ is returning to earth very soon sorry it took little longer today because god emphasized in my heart that i need to talk to someone why all this initial 10 to 15 minutes or 8 to 9 minutes of generic teachings are important is because this is what will refine you this is what will rejuvenate you this is what will give you that light of over yourself therefore you are able to refine your system and come closer to god only then you qualify in the rapture program if jesus comes before you are dead and gone or if you are dead and gone before jesus comes you will land up in paradise anyway you will be connected to jesus correct how many of you believe that jesus is there in paradise 
Of course, he's there. No, he's seated on the right side of the Father in heaven. He's spirit. He's anywhere, everywhere. I'm not saying he's a dual personality, but maybe he visits paradise and he goes back. Uh, you know, of course, he will give that uh, that that, uh, that 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 pleasure that we, you and I can say hello to him. He visits probably. But even otherwise, I have no issues. Why? Because I have known enough of Jesus. No problem. But I would like to talk to Paul. I would like to talk to Peter. I would like to talk to many other prophets. Habakkuk, Obadiah, Isaiah. How did you guys minister the word of God during such challenging situations? I would meet Elijah and I will ask him, you did wonderfully well, but something happened in your system that you ran for your life. Uh, you were scared of Jezebel, but did you not confront her? You were such a courageous man. What really happened? And I want to hear such stories. And by then Jesus would be sent to earth. <laughs> you know, this is going to take a lot of time. Maybe I need some 20,000 years to listen to all the stories of this wonderful men of God, uh, wonderful women of God. Sister Deborah, I would go and meet and sit with her. Sister, how were you like this? You are more than a warrior. Miriam, I would go and meet her and ask her, what made you to rebel against your brother because he was your younger brother? Please tell me, something happened, right? And I would meet Aaron. Aaron, how can you do this? How did you build a calf, man? You know about your God. I want to understand many things. Unanswered questions are too many from the Bible. Only Holy Spirit can answer, but he is not. He is refusing to answer because why? it's not necessary, dude. Focus on most important things. One life, you have very short span of time. And that's where, that and that too, you are ministering the word of God. All these questions you kept keep in reservation. Go and meet Jesus in the paradise or the saints in the paradise and then talk to them. Now you understand. What gets you there, beloved? That's what we are reviewing here very carefully. Jesus left behind 14 events as indications and signs. When all of these are fulfilled, you will know that my coming is going to be very, very close or very quick, very short. You will not have much time after that. You will not have much time left after that. Therefore, walk in diligence, walk in light, Ephesians chapter 5, walk in wisdom. Right? So we are reviewing the fourth event now. First one, wars, violence, lawlessness, famine and drought leading to poverty. The second one and third one, earthquakes and its natural catastrophes. Now fourth one, disease epidemics. Disease epidemics, we have gone a little far, far, far ahead, you know. Almost like 10 to 15 sessions are over if I'm not wrong, correct? But we are not done. I have many things to review with you because why disease is common, sickness is even more common. Sickness is personalized in your body, genetical system, it happens. And God allows it personalized. But yes, they are also in common. For example, you get a headache, I also get a headache. You get fever, I also get fever. But the reason for fever is different from, the reason for headache is different from your system to my system. That's sickness, personalized. Disease, it's common. It's a plague that's spreading across the ends of the earth. Coronavirus is one example. Babunic plague is another example. That's, that's what we are reviewing. In a previous session, I took you through the history of pandemics that happened in the world. Not everything. And everything, if I were to cover, then I need, what, 200 hours to preach and teach only on that. There's so much is there. But some of the top events we picked and we have shown you in the 18th century what happened, 19th century what happened and all that. If you have missed that, please go and listen up. Very, very important. God's warning to man. Under this title, I want to do a little bit of study today. And I have many titles also. God's warning to man is tightly coupled to disease epidemics. In other words, Jesus left behind this as an indication when disease epidemics are overwhelming. Nobody would have even visualized in their dreams a disease like coronavirus would shut down the world and lockdown. I have never heard anything like lockdown. In my lifespan, I have heard this for the first time in the year 2020. 2019, I was hearing that China was going under lockdown and uh, I, I, anyway, China is a communist country. These guys locked down their release and that's usual thing for them. But lockdown in India, democratic country. Yes, never imagined in my dreams. US, can you imagine lockdowns happen? European countries lockdown happened. In Russia, lockdown happened. These are all God's warning to man. COVID-19 has brought much of the world to a state of near panic. 
entire nations have been shut down due to the disease government ordered closures of many many thousands of businesses and have thrown millions of people out of work and many people killed themselves they committed suicide many people many pilots family were almost begging on streets because why aeronautic industry was completely shut down tourism was completely shut down no tours and those industries how did they how did they function entertainment industry not functioning movies and all that in one way it was good actually people would not watch movies in theaters <laughs> sitting there and watching some crazy stuff for 3 hours my goodness how are you able to do it right liquor shops also were closed all the sign of few things happened for good but many things happened for for the bad of the mankind and uh, many many pilots you know they killed themselves they shot themselves they could not bear the agony that they were thrown out of their job and it remains to be seen whether such steps are out of proportion to the danger posed by the virus however the economic impact of business shutdowns may well bring a worldwide recession if not another worldwide depression like that of the 1930s 1930s you know such depressions was overwhelming why because there was a revolution happening industrial revolution happening and many people lost their jobs that led to depression and they were dead and gone it's not that always people kill themselves depression it, itself is like a self suicidal stuff that is if you are in depression right that is good enough it's like a slow poison that kills you <clears throat> you'll not be able to be normal like others and you will never be happy you will not smile you will not laugh you will not go to get togethers you'll not go to church you'll not go for a walk you will not get up anywhere even to the toilet you will go once in a while something like that and then you will be dead and gone your muscles all will grow uh, weaker and that's it you're you're going to be finished that happened in the 1930s era and such things you know it was expected in the world and many people went into depression many divorces were filed you know because of the disease epidemics divorces were, were filed why because husband and wife they never were in the same house but those many months or a couple of years actually speaking they both were working from home and they always end up in some other fights you know and then that became a issue and many many divorce papers were filed i'm not joking you go and check in your system google out and see you will understand in china especially it is all about work they are workaholics and they could not sit at home so far you with me <laughs> you see disease epidemics bring bring separation in the families disease epidemics takes away your pleasure and happiness disease of epidemics bring uh, br- you know uh, uh, ma- ma- makes you to commit suicide disease epidemics gives you the fear of death and cause for worry it's all connected yet these things are only a foretaste of catastrophes to come which bible prophecy indicates will be multiple magnitudes worse can we imagine a world in which we see hundreds of millions of deaths you don't have to imagine why because it's a, it's already the case only couple of weeks ago turkey and syria witnessed magnitude of 7.0 earthquake 50000 plus people were buried alive they were dead roughly indicated numbers you know but the actual numbers are going to be even more than that three times or four times more than that is what who is saying this brings us back to god's message to mankind through the four horsemen the horrors that they represent false religion war famines and disease which we reviewed in our previous sessions especially revelation chapter 6 verse number 8 and the are the consequences of mankind rejecting our creator and choosing their own ways to live life their own patterns to worship their god their own gods they manufacture whatever they like in whatever colors and whatever height and stature and nature yeah some people worship in the form of trees some wood and some people worship in the form of stone some people worship the nature uh, sun god moon god this god that god some people worship animals <laughs> they are not creators they are creations which as all of human history has shown uh, resulting in death what death spiritual death and spiritual death leads you to leads you to what physical death because why the destroyer is going to be at work in you 
Turn your Bible with me to Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 12. I need you to believe me. I'm reading from the word of God and preaching and teaching. There is a way which seems right to a man, but the end is the way of death. Never ever do anything that is so convincing because others are practicing, because others are widely talking and practicing. No, consult God. Take counsel from God. Consult the Bible. May the Bible lead you. May the laws and commandments of God be written in your hearts. Blessed is the man who abide in the laws and commandments of God. Revelation 20 to 14 says that. John 14, 21. John 15, 10. 1 John 5, 3. None of his laws are burdensome. Be obedient child. Walking in the commandments of God. I gave you all the references. Light to the body and lamp to the feet. Your word. Huh? Psalms 19, 7. You will understand, beloved. That's why we are giving you a lot of references. Do not do anything that seems so pleasing and wonderful and gives you that pleasure and lightness. See, I'm not against going for an outing or a touring once in a while with your family. You need outing. I like, I like uh, going for a long drive with my family and I like that. But can I do that every week? No. That is a season to laugh. That is a season to enjoy according to Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 8. See, that is also from the Bible. You have to allow the Bible to set those, set those norms and set those conditions. And you are able to extract those principles. And you walk according, abiding, accordingly abiding in the principles of the Bible. That is a way which seems right to a man. Does not mean it seems right to God. Proverbs 14, 12 says that, but it's, End is the way of death. If you are not allowing God to counsel to your expectations or needs, you got to take that counsel from your God. Not saying you should refrain from some of your elders in the church and all. Some of the elders are pastors in the church. God will counsel through mankind also. No, I am not against it. That's how he is preaching and teaching through me. You are hearing the voice of God, not the voice of a man. I'm only dedicating my time and efforts and I'm just coming here and doing what God asks me to do. That's it. Not against that. But then you need to ensure that counsel is from the Bible. That's why you see we never stay away from Bible. I'm giving you all references through the Bible. We are able to lead. And that's why what is the best way to check the spirit in 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 to 23. Check the spirit. Many of you are blinking. Rolling your eyes. I will read it better for you. Beloved, it is all released. It is all connected to, you know, the indications left behind by Jesus. Even during the times of disease epidemics, many people were roaming across the ends of the earth without mask. Believers in Christ. Why? God is my protector and all that. Nonsense. You should have little common sense, right? That is where you need to take counsel from God. And they got killed. Many people were dead and gone. One young, not young actually, mid-aged couple in my own church. The fellow never wore a mask. They both were dead. First he, was, he passed away in the, that week. The next week his wife was buried in the same grave. Finished. They had only one child. One son. He's orphan now. Young boy. He's only like 18, sorry, 20 years old or something like that. Huh? Uh, in every, uh, uh, sorry, in every, uh, no, wait. Now, test all things, hold fast to what is good. In the original translation, test all the spirits and abstain from every form of evil. 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 to 22. Remember that. I'll show you one more verse. Uh, Proverbs 16, 25. One of my favorite verses. There is a way that seems right to a man, but it, it, it end is the way of death. I remember Proverbs 16.25, but I forgot. The same thing has been reiterated in Proverbs 14.12. You see, if the if one verse is coming twice, ditto. That is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Same thing you will find in Proverbs 14.12. Twice it's recorded in the same book, which means it's very, very important. The Bible is full of warnings. Full of warnings. And pleadings from God to turn from our sinful ways and seek the Lord while he may be found. 
while he may be found in the sense while you are still alive well while still you have that breath in your nostrils you have not yet been buried in your grave i say 55 6 especially seek the lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near hmm you miss all these opportunities you land up in the place of torment it's technically called as hell logically called as hell you are nowhere close to god you would never get an opportunity to reconcile you never get an opportunity again to set things right would you no you won't you know, you know that right i don't have to tell you this my time is running he wants us to live righteously according to his laws which shows us how to love him and our fellow man be kind to one another be compassionate may your words be seasoned with grace colossians 4632 to philippians 313 focus on things that are above and all these things how can you obtain the protection of god in the midst of these disease pandemics you got to be the doer of the word beloved you got to be a you you cannot be a hypocrite just by carrying the bible and wearing that cross around your neck and you know it's 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 going to do nothing second peter 3:9 and returning not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling but on the contrary blessing knowing that you were called to this that you may inherit a blessing you see i'm talking about disease pandemics but i'm linking it to the promises not the promises the laws and commandments and the instructions of the bible what could protect you what could make you qualify when jesus is allowing when god is allowing all this natural catastrophes and disease pandemics to come and uh, inflict the mankind why even if you drink poison nothing will inflict you don't take a poison and tempt the lord that do not tempt the lord what does it mean is in every vegetable and all that you get right there are pesticides and it becomes cancerous over a period of time if you are free of cancer that simply means that you are abiding in the laws and commandments of god therefore the protection of god is in you that's why you need to pray over your food when you eat that is also a commandment thank god for the daily bread that he gave jesus taught us now okay now you are getting it you know on the contrary show that love and blessing ephesians chapter 4 verse number 2 and 32 matthew 6:14 take and read there are a lot of commandments given to you from paul the apostle and jesus the lord you know how you should mean matthew 5:43 to 48 you know very very it's a mountain mountain a sermon on the mount extended sermon on the mount now sermon on the mount itself is in 5 and uh and 6 is extended i'm sorry but then you will find that very clearly matthew 5:43 to 48 bless those who persecute you pray for those who are spitefully used you all these commandments you will find it has got tight connection with what we are preaching and teaching here the antidote to end time plagues are also very clearly indicated in the bible do we have an antidote to the fourth horseman of disease and death many people ask this question yes we do and any of us can claim it yeah remediation plan keeping yourself and your family uh, from the demonic forces reaching out to you no demonic forces no weapons formed against you shall prosper bible says even the count of your hairs in the very head is all numbered luke 12:7 says that no huh? i say 54:17 boy is what i told you no weapons formed against you shall prosper when it won't would not prosper only when you abide in these laws and commandments only when you are a god pleaser and not a people pleaser and god brought his people israel out of egypt he told them if you will listen carefully exodus 15:26 you all know this right listen carefully to the voice of the lord your god and do what is right in his sight obeying his commands and keeping all his decrees then i will decrees decrees means his laws and testimonies then i will make you suffer then i will not make you suffer any of the diseases i sent on the egyptians for i am the lord who heals you very much applicable even in the new covenant days very much applicable egyptians are unbelievers paganites denied the god of israel even after god tempting them for you know allowing the temptations of the, through those 10 plagues they they their hearts were hardened only few people 
accepted the God of Israel. Why? Because Bible witnesses that the horsemen and the army soldiers and all they went and plead. Uh, they went, sorry, they went, they were pleading Pharaoh. Let this is the finger of God. We cannot fight against the uh, you know God Himself. Let's not do this, Pharaoh. Pharaoh never listened. They were all buried in the midst of the sea. Well, if they would not move ahead, they will be beheaded. That's the law in their land. If they disobey the voice of the king, they will be all beheaded. So they didn't have a choice. That was the only thing, you know, traveling right in front of them. Poor fellows, isn't it? But if you obey, that is, you see, every promise is a conditional statement. People claim only the second half. God will heal me, bless my bread and water and you will heal me. Exodus 23, 25, they will say. But 26, uh, and previous verses you read, it is conditional statement. Only if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God. How can you hear the voice of the Lord, of, uh, Lord your God? It's all recorded. This is the voice. When you read the Bible, it is the voice of God that you are actually hearing. But if they disobeyed him, this is what they could expect. Deuteronomy 28.15, Deuteronomy 28.21-22, Deuteronomy 28.28. I have, we have meditated all of, all of these verses in our previous sessions, especially in this disease pandemic section, you know. A couple of verses I'll read for you. If you refer, refuse to listen to the Lord your God and do not obey all the commands and decrees, I will, I'm giving you today, all these curses will come and overwhelm you. The Lord will afflict you with diseases until none of you are left in the land. Certain, you know, certain families were completely wiped off by coronavirus. It's, it's, you know, husband, wife, children, everybody are dead. Yeah, that, that is also witnessed, right? It's a curse which is allowed by God. The Lord will strike you with weight, wasting diseases, fever, inflammation. The Lord will strike you with madness, blindness and panic. Yet after the devastating ride of the four horsemen, the book of Revelation shows the rest of the story. God's merciful intervention, both to correct as well as save the human race from extinction, you know. God is merciful even towards the wicked. Even at least then they will listen to the voice of God. God will bring peace and freedom from death and disease to the earth in his wonderful kingdom. But not before mankind has learned the lesson of where our human ways led us. Astray, let us far away from God and His presence. And the story of mankind doesn't end with the last of the four horsemen of Revelation, beloved. John saw not four horsemen, but five. Right? And mankind's hope lies with the fifth horseman, Jesus Christ, who's, who's right in Revelation 19, 11 to 16, the battle of Armageddon, just before the battle of Armageddon, right? 11 to 16. I have to read that for you. 19, 11 to 16. Then I saw a heaven opened and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war. But you don't have to wait until then to experience the blessings that can come from knowing and having a relationship with him. Why not act now? Why not dig into God's word now and to learn? What he really wants and expects of us and how can you avoid the horrifying times to come on our world? The choice is up to us. God is not someone who will emphasize anything. How many of you know that? <coughs> God is merciful, compassionate, but at the same time he gives that free will. It's up to you, my son, my daughter. And he will never force himself or enforce Anything on anyone saying, if you don't uh, listen to me, then I will force you to listen. No, he will stay, he will back off, he will stay away from you gently. But he will be depressed. Depressed in a sense, he will be grieved in his heart. Ephesians 4.30, Romans 8.26 says that with a grieving and groaning spirit, the Holy Spirit will continue to pray for us. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity that you have bestowed upon us. At another moment, at another session, oh Lord, you are talking to us so vividly that how much you care for us. And this is a wonderful opportunity that we all have right in front of us to repent and reconcile with you, oh Lord. Grant us this wisdom and lead us by your side and please admonish us. In Jesus' name we pray.
god bless you please subscribe if you have not you will start receiving automatic notifications and share share this channel details this video details with whomever you know you are the light to the world you have to bring others to light others to the life of salvation use our channel details if you are not blessed with the gift of preaching and teaching use our details channel details pass the videos links who knows one video could save a soul one channel information could save a family and that family could save a town or a city and that city could save the nation <laughs> so never ever refrain from your responsibility and you have another responsibility pray for all the ministers of god including me pastors evangelists missionaries that's a commandment in the bible likewise when you have a prayer request do not run to any of these people not required they are not villains they are not bad but the thing is it's not needed that's when you will grow spiritually right you need to have that personalized fellowship with your god make your request known to him and he will he who uh, you know kind of listens to you from the secret place will reward you publicly bible says matthew 6:5 it says that philippians 4:6 john 14:14 14, 14, in jesus name when you ask these petitions it will be answered do not make those funny prayers ha ah, daddy are you listening to me and all that in the name of jesus claim your petitions claim those promises and make your petitions reveal to god and he will perfect all your concerns psalm 138 and verse number 8 says that and with that we close and god bless you thank you again very much for your time stay connected we will meet you in the next session god bless